This pattern of bright and dark lines, known as fringes, demonstrates a key property of light, that it behaves like a wave. The pattern is formed on a screen, but as I like to show my students, it exists all the way back to this pair of vertical slits, which is responsible for producing it. Now, I'm using a commercially available double slit slide just held in a clamp, and behind that, a laser also held in a clamp. At A-level, physics students will be required to use this phenomenon and the theory which explains it to calculate a value for the wavelength of the laser light. Depending on which exam board they're with, they'll either use the equation lambda equals ax over d or lambda equals sw over d, both of which relate the wavelength to the slit spacing, the fringe separation and the distance to the screen. If you plot a graph of the distance to the screen against the fringe separation, you should get a straight line which has a gradient equal to the slit spacing divided by the wavelength. And if you know the slit spacing, you can calculate the wavelength. Now lasers are brilliant fun to play with and it's inevitable that students will want to wave them around and point them at each other. Now, none of us likes to be killjoys, but this practical does present an opportunity to talk to students about working safely and considerately in the lab. If you're thinking about buying more lasers so you can do this as a class practical, you might be tempted to buy the cheapest ones you can get a hold of. Cheap lasers might be marked with the safe one milliwatt or less rating. However, they're often much, much more powerful than this and really shouldn't be used by students. We recommend that you only buy them from reputable suppliers. If you've got any doubts, it's always worth consulting with Kleeps. I'm using a piece of graph paper stuck to a safety screen, but you can use a wall or whatever else is easiest. However, it's best to avoid having lasers crisscrossing the lab. Students should be able to use the graph paper to find the fringe separation, and it's worth getting them to think about whether they should take their measurements from the centre of the maxima or the centre of the minima. It's also worth challenging them to think about how to get the most precise measurement of that separation. Commercial double slit slides can be quite expensive and this experiment does take up a lot of space so you might want to just put one set of kit in the corner of the lab and get students to come up one at a time to take their measurements while the others get on with something else. Hi Christina, I see you're showing off your lateral thinking again. Actually this is a different experiment. So I'm using a diffraction grating here and it's a nice compact arrangement if you haven't got very much space per student in your lab. Yeah, very clever and it looks a lot safer because the laser's pointing downwards. Yeah, that's true, but you must point out to students that they might get stray reflections in this plane. Yeah, so this works in a similar way to a double slit but the physics is slightly different but I'd expect teachers to teach it around the same time. Yes, the relationship here is n lambda equals d sine theta. So n is the number of the order, the order of the fringe that you're getting. Lambda is the wavelength. d is the, num the spacing of the lines on the diffraction grating. And theta is the angle between the straight through direction and the fringe that you're looking at. Yeah, but these are quite big angles, so students can't get away with using a small angle approximation for sine theta. No, that's right. They should use trigonometry to get theta. OK, well, shall we give it a go? Yep. So if we take two fringes either side of the central maximum, yeah. there we go, 191 millimetres. Yeah, but we're going to divide that by two. Yes, that's right. Okay. And then the height, the distance to the screen, taking it from the, okay, is that straight? Yeah, uh, 225 millimetres. Yeah, and how many lines on the grating? 300 lines per millimetre. OK. OK, so, so uh, if my calculations are correct, that gives us a value of 650 nanometres, <laughs> which isn't bad for red light. And if I was doing this with my students, I'd get them to compare their value with the manufacturer's stated value. Yes, and if you wanted to take this further, you could give your students a different diffraction grating with a different number of lines per millimetre, if you've got them, and challenge them to compare the uncertainties they get for their values of wavelength. Brilliant. Thanks, Christina. When a version of this experiment was first done by Thomas Young in 1803, it started a process which overturned long-held beliefs about the nature of light. It was a significant step towards our modern-day understanding, and more than 200 years later, it's still counterintuitive that you can shine light at a screen and get darkness. This practical also shows how a macroscopic measurement can allow us to determine a microscopic quantity. It's one of my favourites. 
I hope you found that useful. In the description below, you'll find links to lots of other useful stuff like teacher's notes and worksheets. And please don't forget to subscribe so you can watch the other films in the series. Okay, this doesn't feel weird at all.